Happy Resurrection Sunday here at Laurel Land Memorial Park, right where my grandparents Albert Thomas and Henrietta Smith are buried. So I couldn't quite make a trip out to the Holy Land, but I thought that this would be the perfect prop here. So I'm just going to uh, take advantage of the opportunity. So I'm going to share a few powerful Bible verses. Um, you know, I've read these plenty of times in the past, but you know, a few months back they became uh, more alive, more real to me. So I'm going to start with Matthew 27, 50 through 53. And then Jesus cried out once more loudly, and he breathed his last breath. At that instant, the temple curtain was torn in half from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split in two, the tombs burst open, and bodies of many sleeping women and men were raised up. Okay, I'm going to pause there. Okay, so early on Sunday morning, even before the sun had fully risen, the two Marys and Salome bought sweet-smelling spices to anoint the body of Jesus. Along the way, they wondered to themselves, how would they roll the heavy stone away from the opening? But when they arrived, they discovered the stone was already rolled away. Stepping through the opening, see here, uh, they were startled to see a young man in a white robe seated inside, just to the right. This man in white said, Do not be afraid. You came seeking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He is gone. He is risen. See the place where his body was laid? Go back and tell Peter and his disciples that he goes before you into Galilee. Just as he said, you will see him there when you arrive. So the women went out quickly, and they, went, they were outside the tomb. They ran away, trembling and astonished. Along the way, they didn't stop to say anything to anyone because they were too afraid. It's funny, the angel said, do not be afraid, but yeah, they were still afraid. <laughs> so, now back to the tombs bursting open because this huge earthquake, earthquake occurred, uh, you know, when Jesus gave his last breath. But then after the resurrection, after Jesus was resurrected, also these bodies were resurrected. And they came out of their tombs and they went into the holy city of Jerusalem and showed themselves to the, to the people. Uh, so this was actually somewhat of a, it was a fulfillment of prophecy. Uh, the book of Isaiah, written 700 years before Christ, was pointing to Jesus. I'm going to read out of Isaiah 26, 19. Those of our people who have died will live again. Their bodies will come back to life. And those sleeping in their graves will wake up as the sparkling dew refreshes the earth, so the Lord will revive those who have long been dead. And then another translation says, the earth shall cast out the dead. So it's Isaiah 26, 19. And so the truth is, is that Christ is risen from the dead as the first fruit of a great resurrection harvest of those who have died. Says in 1 Corinthians 15 20. And then uh, another thing to add here if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty in your sins. So we're just going to focus on the resurrection of Christ and what he has done for us. And as a reminder, that very same spirit that raised Christ from the grave is also living in you. Jesus to, as your Lord and Savior, this applies to you. So we all have resurrection power. So that wraps it up. So I hope you all are having a beautiful day.